Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. While well, we're down here on the bench to have a look at this interesting little device that was given to me. This is an inner mod filter for two meters. Um, it's just a little aluminum block. SO239 connector and a power wire on one side, switch and an LED. SO239 connector on the output side. It has a label that has mostly worn away, so I cannot tell the manufacturer. I think that might be a model number right there, and I think that says T5-144, and that might be the uh, brand name there, but I can't make it out. But anyway, it's an intermod filter for two meters. What is an intermod filter? Well, we'll get into that in a moment. I wanted to open this thing up and have a look inside because uh, one interesting thing about it is this power wire and switch. The uh, ham that gave this to me was keen to point out that you can transmit through this filter. That if you power it and turn this switch on, um, it'll allow you to transmit through it. So I'm kind of curious to see how they do that. I've got a pretty good idea. It's a solid aluminum block. I mean, it's pretty pretty hefty, pretty uh, rigid. It looks like we've got two screws here and four screws here that'll open it up. So let's take it apart and see what's inside an inner mod filter. All right, it just slides out. That is a pretty solid aluminum block there, man. This thing is well built. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, yeah, interesting. Let me reposition the camera for a little bit closer view. Well, maybe you can see that okay. I think, I guess I can zoom in post. So, obviously, what's going on here? We've got these in little inductors. That's a small one, just a couple of turns. There's another one capacitor there. Some discrete electronics over here, which is obviously for the, the switching. On the other side, we've got two more little two-turn inductors there, and uh, some capacitors here, surface mount capacitors, between the filter elements, and a relay. So, obviously, the transmitting through the filter uh, method is this relay switches in to bypass the filter circuit for a straight through path when you're transmitting. And that would be what this little two transistor circuit is doing here. There's a diode. So uh, I know what's going on here. The, uh, the diode is rectifying the incoming RF to DC, uh, which is being filtered, and then driving one transistor, which is then driving this transistor probably, and then this one would be turning on the relay. So when you transmit, the incoming RF gets sensed by this circuit and switches on the relay, which then bypasses the filter. So no surprise there, pretty easy. But what is this filter? Well, let me, uh, let me take a few minutes here and uh, reverse engineer this and draw it up so we can see how that filter is laid out and what it's doing. All right, that didn't take long um, to trace this out and figure out what it is. So this is the schematic of the filter. And uh, we have our transmitter coming in through an inductor. And then we have an inductor and capacitor in parallel through another small inductor to ground. Uh, goes through a capacitor, we got another capacitor down and then another capacitor and then another inductor and capacitor in parallel. And finally, we go through yet another capacitor and an inductor to the antenna. This looks very, very similar to, and in fact is, a bandpass filter. Um, a bandpass filter, let's say, 
we've got a frequency that we're interested in. Here, a bandpass filter will do something like this. A little bell curve. It'll pass through the frequency that we're interested in and frequencies that are below or above that frequency will be attenuated. So, yeah, that makes sense to me. This, this is a, a bandpass filter. Now, how does a bandpass filter protect you against intermod? Well, to understand that, we need to understand what intermod is um, and how it can interfere with your radio. So let's go upstairs to the computer and uh, have a look at what intermod actually is. So what is intermod anyway? Well, simply put, intermod is signal mixing. Mixing of signals either in the air or in your equipment that produce undesirable and interfering results. Well, how does signal mixing actually work? Well, let's say, for example, that we take a 10 megahertz signal and a 30 megahertz signal, and we feed those into a mixer. Now, what's going to happen is the two signals are going to combine. And what's going to come out the other end is going to be four signals. You're going to have the original 10 megahertz signal. You're going to have the original 30 megahertz signal. But you're also going to have the sum and the difference of the two signals. Mixers are used in uh, superheterodyne receivers to produce an intermediate frequency, an IF frequency. And that really helps with the uh, selectivity of the receiver. Um, back in the old days, the only way to really tune your receiver was to have filtering um, in the front end to filter out the undesirable signals. But by mixing a local oscillator with uh, the desired incoming frequency, you could produce an IF um, frequency that you could then filter more accurately. So intermod is when two signals mix together um, and they produce a sum or a difference that interferes with the equipment that you intend to operate. Now, in the real world, let's say you've got your handheld radio, um, two meter radio, and you're interested in a repeater at 146 megahertz. But let's also say for this example that in the vicinity, that close to you, there's a commercial service, like a 400 megahertz band uh, paging service or uh, POXAG uh, text service like from the hospital or something. And also in the same vicinity, let's say that there's a, a, some kind of a commercial communication service, maybe a utility or something that's using 150 megahertz. So with your handheld radio, its antenna is going to pick up those other commercial um, signals. They're going to come in through the antenna and in the front end of the radio, they're going to mix. Now, 150 megahertz, uh, the first harmonic is 300 megahertz, and that's where we can get into some trouble. So if we take that 150 megahertz signal and its first harmonic, 300 megahertz, and we mix that with that 446 megahertz signal, well, 446 minus 300 is 146 megahertz. That's not good. Mixing in the front end of your radio, those two commercial signals are going to intermodulate and produce a difference that is going to be right in the band that you want to operate, and that's going to interfere with your radio. So how does the intermod filter um, solve this problem? Well, remember, it's a bandpass filter. So if we take those three signals and we pass them through that bandpass filter, it's going to attenuate the 446 megahertz and the 156 megahertz, 150 megahertz signal and its harmonics. And so what we're going to get out of that bandpass filter is going to be primarily the uh, desired 146 megahertz signal for our radio. And in that way, that intermod filter is going to eliminate that interference. Pretty neat. So what does intermod sound like, you might wonder? Well, one of the most common sources is paging transmitters. Believe it or not, they still exist. Although these days, a lot of them are being used for uh, telex or teletext services like at hospitals. I happen to live near a hospital, and you can see over here on the SDR, I'm picking up a very strong transmission at uh, around 454.3 megahertz. 
So I'm going to go ahead and unmute that so you can hear it. Let me turn on the desktop audio. And this is what it sounds like. Well, there's a buzz. Let's wait for the next transmission. That's a sinking pulse. And there's the data. What gives away that type of transmission is that little doo -doo at the beginning. Here we go again. That little two-tone uh, warble gives it away. It's a POCSAG, P-O-C-S-A-G. It's a post office text protocol that they developed years and years and years ago that got used by paging transmitters and a lot of other services. It's by far the most common um, noise that I hear on a two meter radio when I hear intermod. So that's what it sounds like. So that's what an intermod filter is, what intermod is, and how the filter can help if you have that type of interference. Now is that something that we all need? No. Uh, people that live in large metropolitan areas are probably likely to be in the vicinity of commercial services that could be causing them intermod interference. Um, if you have large commercial towers near your location, um, if you're setting up a repeater uh, and there's other commercial services in the area, then intermod is, is probably a problem. And it would take some research to look at the frequencies the other radios are using and do a little math to see what the sums and differences are and determine if you're going to have a problem with intermod. So in most cases, uh, this is not just not something you're going to need. But for those of you that do live near commercial services and have intermod as a problem, you just might need an intermod filter. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.